The new mythic banner for September is right around the corner and we'll be talking about our new mythic hero plus the 11 other units you can get your hands on. If you are new then you should know that these special monthly banners feature a starting 8% 5 star focus rate. It also includes a 0% non focus 5 star rate which means any 5 star hero you get from this banner is guaranteed to be one of these 12 heroes listed here. Great time to chase for any new 5 star characters but be wary of sniping for one specific target. Our new mythic hero was a bit of a surprise, but it's Thrasir from the main story. If you haven't been keeping up with the story, then I suggest you get up to date because I will discuss some spoilery information that we got in the last two chapters, you've been warned. Thrasir is one of Hell's generals alongside Leaf, and we first learned that Thrasir is the name of the first Emperor of Embla. She would have been Veronica's ancestor, which would explain the similarities between them. It was believed by Alphonse and our crew that they are fighting the now undead ancestors of their kingdoms, but as it turned out, we learned that Leaf and Thrasir are not their first ancestors, but rather another realm's version of Alphonse and Veronica. They lost their world to Hell and now serve her to try and get it back by defeating our Alphonse. Veronica's worlds. We've encountered Thrasir throughout book 3 so no major surprises here. As a unit she is a green tome infantry mage and she is an anima mythic hero that grants extra defense. As a reminder anima mythic heroes grant reduced lift lost when on your 8th raids defense teams during the correct season. For old skills Thrasir comes with Moonbow, solid all around special, her A skill is flashing blade 4. Does the exact same thing as flashing blade 3 but also deals 5 true damage per hit so it's a nice little extra bit of damage. With flashing blade in her base kit, Thrasir is most likely going to end up with some pretty decent speed. Thrasir's unique tome is called Ifringer, or if you're Apple, then it's the brand new Eyefinger. This tome is effective against dragons, cause why not? Its other effect is that if Thrasir is within 3 spaces of an ally, then she gets plus 4 to all her stats. She also neutralizes any effects that guarantee the false follow-up attacks. This is quite powerful, but there's a catch. After combat, if Thrasir makes an attack, then she inflicts minus 4 to all stats to the nearest ally through their next actions. Like other similar effects, if 2 or more allies are the same amount of spaces away from Thrasir, then all of them will get debuffed. So overall, this is a pretty powerful tome. Ifringer will stop all skills like Quicker Post or Bold Fighter, but not natural speed follow-ups. That said, Thrasir is getting an extra plus 4 to all her stats, and if she ends up with some pretty decent defense and resistance, then maybe she could run some interesting defensive setups too. If you're an Aether Raids player who uses Naga during Astro Season, then Thrasir will possibly be on those Anima defense teams, so you better have an answer for her. If you use dragons in general, then here's another dragon killer mage you have to deal with. All in all, it's going to be pretty tough not to activate Ifringer because of its huge 3 space range, you can maybe take advantage of the debuffs by running someone like a Dun who actually likes getting debuffed or have a Fable Harsh Command user to convert those debuffs into buffs. To go along with Ifringer, Thrasir has a brand new unique B skill called Killing Intent. At the start of combat, if the foe's HP is less than 100%, or if they have a penalty on them, then inflict minus 5 speed and resistance on foe. And if Thrasir is initiating combat, then she gets to make a follow-up attack before the foe can counter. AKA, she gets the desperation effect. Oh boy, so this is a very nice B skill. It gives Thrasir a lot of power with Ifringer because that's essentially an extra plus 9 speed in favor of Thrasir, and then that plus 4 attack combined with the minus 5 res on the enemy equals to 9 more damage very nice synergy and as long as she has some decent base speed she should easily be able to take advantage of flashing blade 4 too. Even better is that flashing blade works really nicely with the desperation effect on the player phase and that allows Thrasir to make her 2 attacks, get plus 10 true damage from flashing blade 4 and then also proc Moombo on her second hit. Very scary stuff. All of this is held back by requiring a little bit of setup. Either Thrasir must fight a weakened foe or a foe affected by a stat debuff or negative status effects like Panic. You can give Thrasir something like Savage Blow or she can use her new C skill. Thrasir introduces Panic Smoke, a smoke skill that inflicts the panic status on the target and all foes within two spaces of that target after combat. This is essentially a skill version of the Panic Staff or a weapon like Legion's Axe. Nothing new, but having the ability to put it in the C slot instead of a weapon slot can be great for certain builds. As a heads up this does affect the target hit too like pulse smoke. This is not the case for the other stat smoke skills which only affect nearby foes. I imagine this skill will work its way into some dagger builds because they already inflict natural stat debuffs and panic stats will stack with those debuffs. Saizo and his smoke dagger effect on his new dagger would just love this against teams who depend on stat buffs to function. Panic smoke will help Thrasir activate killing intent in the case that she has to make the first move and that at least gets her the speed and resistance combat debuffs on the enemy. 
I think you will see this C skill on a lot of annoying unit builds, so watch out if you run buffing comms. It's a nice callback to Veronica's original tome, which actually inflicts panic as well. And hopefully when we do get original Veronica on our side, she gets a nice upgrade to keep her up to date. Overall, I think Thursday looks like a fun unit. She can get really strong herself, but she will inflict those minus 4 debuffs to her teammates, so you do have to be a little careful. As an Aether Raid's defense unit, I think she may end up being pretty annoying. She can initiate with a lot of power, so you have to avoid being debuffed if you want to tank her. Even then, she neutralizes quicker post type skills, so if you want to double her, you're going to need to outspeed her, which will be quite tough if she is naturally fast, combined with her extra speed from her tome and that nasty minus 5 speed from killing intent. I think as long as she ends up with something like 35 or 36 speed, then she will be a scary offensive initiator. You must avoid letting her fight units that are weakened or debuffed, or she just unloads her whole kit. Let me know your thoughts on Tracer in the comments, but for now, let's move on. Now, let's discuss the 11 other heroes on this banner. For red, we have Legendary Eliwood, Legendary Erica, and technically, Legendary Herid. For blue, it's Legendary Ephraim, Shell, and Valentine Sorn. For green, it's Drasir, joined by Mythic Yoon, and then Spring Veronica. Last we have Air, Fallen Female Corn, and Picnic Jenny. We'll now cover all of these unit's abilities and briefly discuss each one. Our red group is pretty interesting this time, we have 3 legendary heroes, all of them sword cavaliers. First up is legendary Eliwood, our most recent addition to this group. Eliwood is all about buff support. While he does have a respectable amount of offense, his ardent Durando grants the highest attack ally with bonus doubler. This doubles all field buffs on a unit by granting the stat boost and combat buffs. To pair with this, his unique vision of Arcadia C skill grants the highest attack ally with plus 6 attack and plus 6 defense, and he has rally speed and res plus, which also grants plus 6 stats to fully buff up that ally. Very fun for super buffing up one unit and sending them out to take on everyone. Now for inheritable skills, Eliwood has death blow 4 for that sweet plus 8 attack initiation. He also has chill attack 3 for extra debo support as well. Next is Legendary Erica, who has put down her original supportive kit to do the job herself. She is the fastest sword cav by a mile, and her storm sigling grants plus per attack, so don't let her 31 base attack fool you. This weapon grants special quit on charge plus 1 per Erica's attack if she is near more enemies than allies. The reason for this is because her unique Lunar Brace B skill is insanely powerful, dealing 50% of the foe's defense and true damage when Erica procs her special. This effect is so good that it does inflict plus 1 to Erica's specials permanently. If you use Lunar Brace with Luna, Erica basically gets rid of the enemy's entire defense stat. Her inheritable skills are solid and helpful, attack and speed solo is very strong for attackers, and odd defense wave is nice for units who want those self buffs. Last up is Herid, who is the slow tanky type of sword cavalier and has a fun kit based around debuffing. His sword grants a follow-up attack and denies an enemy's follow-up attack if the enemy is affected by a stat debuff or negative status effect. Luckily, Chilling Seal hits the lowest res enemy with minus 6 attack and speed, plus Herid has attack smoke to further spread more debuffs. For inheritable skills, you probably want distant counter, and in a team that can supply lots of debuffs, Herid is actually quite scary. Overall, summoning for Red is best if you want a new sword cavalier. Lear. All of these guys are pretty good and have some nice skills too. First in the blue group is Legendary Ephraim, a hard hitting Lance Cavalier. His flame Sigmund, like Erica's Storm Siglin, only activates when surrounded by more enemies than allies. It grants Ephraim a follow up attack, so he's a great initiator to a fight. And with Solar Brace, Ephraim gets some extra healing when his special activates. This can stack with healing specials like Soul or pair with damage specials for added healing. If you want a skill from Ephraim, then Sturdy Stance is your best bet, offering plus 4 attack and defense when attacked first. Next we have Xiao, who is a regular 5 star summonable lance armor unit. She is sort of like an updated version of Effie, very high attack, very low speed, and some pretty good HP defense and resistance. She comes with the barrier lance plus, which is the same as Berkut's lance, granting plus 7 res when attacked. She also has Bolt Fighter, which is an OP armor skill, which allows for follow up attacks and special quit on charging. If you like Aether Raids, Xiao has one of the better Aether Raids only skills in my opinion. The defense variants of these skills have a much better shot at proccing since you can control where your structures are and this one is for defense and resistance. Not great for when you hide that surter in the corner of the map, but can be nice if your unit is in the way of all your defense structures, forcing the enemy to face them first. Last we have Valentine Soren, he is a blue mage cavalier and while definitely not as crazy as Reinhardt, he has a nice 35 attack and 33 speed. His Blar Bloom's plus tome grants plus 3 to all stats when adjacent to at least one ally. Nice but nothing insane. He does come with some rare supportive skills. Rally attack and speed plus is very nice and he has speed faint for debuffs plus res opening for team buffs. 
Moving on to green, we have Thrasir of course, no need to continue talking about her, but for inheritable skills, she has Flashing Blade 4 and the new Panic Smoke. Panic Smoke definitely has the ability to work on all kinds of different builds. Next we have Mythic Yoon, she is a high res flying green mage and she also relies on debuffs to function. If her foe is affected by a debuff or status effect then Chaos Manifest grants plus 6 attack and a follow up attack. She can spread tons of debuffs herself with her Chaos name C skill which throws out debuffs in a 3 column range from Yoon if enemies have less res than her. She also has Sabotage Rest to catch anyone not in that range. She works very well with units that like debuffs and I actually enjoy using her quite a bit. Our third green unit is Spring Veronica, not quite dead yet, she is another flying green mage with great attack and speed. Her unique tome grants plus 3 speed and if she is above 75% HP, then she gets plus 4 to all stats. An interesting ability, Veronica wants to stay healthy but basically any attack will probably put her under the HP threshold. She does have chill res, so she's gonna hit quite hard on her first encounter. She also has green dual flying if you want fancy using a low BST mage for arena modes. If you plan to summon for the seer, it's not a bad time if you don't mind some other green mages. Last is the colorless group, we have Air who should be familiar to most players. You can get a free copy of her by completing chapter 1 of book 3 I believe. That said, having multiple airs is nice for 8th raid scoring and she does have some nice skills to inherit. Swift Sparrow is of course always handy for offensive units. Then we have Mystic Boost which is still only from air and grants plus 6 HP after every fight, plus disables adaptive damage effects. Second colorless option is Fallen Female Corrin who in my opinion is quite an annoying colorless dragon to face. She is very fast and she has balanced defenses so she can take a hit or two. Her Savage Breath grants up to plus 6 to all stats if no allies are within 2 spaces. This means taking down her teammates first actually makes her stronger. She also has Attack and Speed Solo to become even faster and Sudden Panic is another panic oriented skill but this time in the B slot. I don't really see this skill often because of the B slot is very competitive but it's another annoying ability. Last unit in this banner is Picnic Jenny who is a cavalry healer. She does have high attack and resistance but is pretty slow. She is more of a backline healer and her toasty skewer offers plus 3 defense and res to all allies within 2 spaces if they are attacked first. She has physic and fire flood bomb plus which grants plus 6 attack and resistance to all allies. Wrathful staff is still a valuable healer B skill to run with dowsing staff. Defense opening grants the ally with the highest defense plus 6 defense for the turn. Not a bad kit but more of a traditional healer compared to brave veronica or brave camilla. That wraps up this mythic banner, will you be summoning for our first book 3 antagonist or will you be waiting for leaf and probably hell later on? Thrasir definitely looks powerful but she does need a little bit of setup to be truly scary. While she may not have been as crazy in the story maps, her new killing intent B skill is pretty strong. If her stats end up with okayish defense and res, I could even see some tankier setups working too and that could be very annoying to deal with. I would not mind getting her but I think I'm gonna pass this time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.